Countries in Europe have intentions to become the leaders in the military aircraft industry. In Europe, two projects for sixth-generation multifunctional military aircraft are currently being developed, which should significantly reduce the technological gap between them and the United States. In today's video, we'll be discussing in detail the latest news about the Future Combat Air System project and tell you all about its technical highlights. As part of the revival of Franco-German working relations, the two governments have proposed the formation of the Future Combat Air System FCAS, to replace the Rafale and Eurofighter. As part of the project, there are plans to create a combat aircraft by 2040. In 2018, the German and French defense ministers signed the High-Level Common Operational Requirements HLCORD, document which defines the overall expectations and requirements for the Next Generation Weapons System NGWS, under FCAS. In parallel to this, Airbus and Dassault Aviation, as leaders of the national industry of Germany and France, have agreed to a broad transnational industry collaboration to jointly lead this ambitious project, with Dassault Aviation leading the development of the Next Generation Fighter NGF. Airbus Defense and Space was involved in the project as the main partner. Another major operational milestone took place in February of 2019 with the signing of the Franco-German Joint Concept Study JCS, the first transnational contract for FCAS worth 65 million euros and having a duration of two years. This pointed to one of the possible concepts, several of which have already emerged, with the differences between the Dassault and Airbus configurations. A few months later, in May 2019, during the Paris Air Show in Les Bourget, a significant step towards the Europeanization of FCAS was taken when Spain officially joined the program. In February of 2020, a 155 million euro, 18-month demonstration Phase 1A contract was signed marking the start of technology development and maturity for FCAS. France, Germany, and a third partner, Spain, have been negotiating for months on how to distribute the complex workload in order to move the project forward. In August 2021, they finally signed an agreement to inject a total of 3.6 billion euros into the initial phase of the project, known as Phase 1B. The FCAS team had the goal of launching its own flight demonstrator in 2025, which was supposed to take to the skies two years later. FCAS has taken a major step towards first flight by signing a landmark contract in December of 2022, covering approximately 3.5 years of work on the FCAS demonstrator and its components. This contract, valued at 3.2 billion euros, was awarded to Dassault Aviation, Airbus, Indra, UMET, and other industrial partners for the 1B demonstration phase. The Demonstrator Phase 1B agreement reflects the determination of France, Germany, and Spain to create a powerful, innovative, and fully European weapon system to meet the operational needs of the armed forces of these countries. This continues the successful development work of the Phase 1A demonstrators, which has enabled the identification of key technologies and the launch of prototype development. Paving the way for the program development phase, Demonstration Phase 1B will allow continued work on flying demonstrators and facilitate the implementation of the required advanced technologies, as well as the consolidation of the project architecture. In-flight demonstrations are planned in the next phases by 2028. In Phase 1B, the two companies will look at what the next generation of fighter jets and new drones will look like before construction begins in Phase 2 and flight testing completes development plans in Phase 3. The final phase will also see air assets pooled together. The agreement was reached despite persistent news in the media throughout 2022 that two of the three main contractors, Airbus and Dassault, had not reached agreement on launching the R&D Phase 1B that would lead to the prototype fighter by 2027. Significantly enough, the FCAS contract announcement states that an in-flight demonstration is expected by 2028 or 2029. However, the nature of the flying demonstrators developed for the FCAS remains unclear. By their nature, stealth combat aircraft programs require very long development times as well as very high costs. As with GCAP, Having three countries involved in costs and industrial capacity should help keep timelines and costs manageable. At the same time, the program must also ensure that various potentially conflicting national requirements are met, 
so that industrial partners are satisfied with the distribution of work and access to technology. This has been a sticking point for FCAS in the past. Work leading up to the ultimate ambition of FCAS includes the Next Generation Weapon System NGWS, program, which uses entirely new technologies, among them Next Generation Fighter NGF. The aforementioned manned fighter will be capable of ground and deck operations. NGF is at the heart of FCAS, although it is not known for certain how this will form. We know that the NGF is planned to have stealth characteristics, especially in order to reduce the likelihood of detection by long-range surveillance of enemy airspace. In its description of the NGWS, the German Ministry of Defense talks about balancing between high stealth capabilities and the best possible aerodynamics, suggesting that there will be some compromise between low visibility as well as maneuverability and kinematic performance. The requirement to have an NGF or a version of the NGF capable of operating with the French Navy's aircraft carriers will create further development challenges, mainly in the form of a landing gear capable of absorbing deck landings as well as ejection and triggering. The airframe also needs to be stronger for carrier operation by adding structural mass. This maritime requirement should be factored into the wing and control surface design to allow for optimized carrier recovery. At the very least, this would require a variant built for operator type assignments, which would further add cost and time. The military NGF will go to sea aboard a next generation French nuclear powered aircraft carrier, scheduled to enter service in 2038. We also know that FCAS benefits from low observation technologies that have been tested under the Low Observable UAV Testbed LOUT program, a secret program first revealed by Airbus in 2019. LOUT explored various low visibility configurations and included four model tones used for aerodynamic and anechoic chamber tests. From what we know of the program at this point in time, no flying glider has ever been built or tested under LOUT. Of course, like NGF, FCAS will have different unmanned systems that are likely to be even more stealthy and may rely more on LOUT experiments. The program consists of a set of systems, next generation fighters, which are combined with remote carriers and connected via the combat cloud. To meet the ambitions and challenges of such a program, an adapted and efficient industrial organization has been created that is built around technology pillars. Each component is under the leadership of an industry leader acting as the main one, working closely with its main partners and using the ecosystems of the aviation industry of each country. Dassault is leading the participation of French industry in the FCAS program, while Airbus represents Germany and Indra represents Spain. The program is divided into seven technology pillars, each led by a separate company, and also includes subcontractors. Dassault is in charge of the new fighter jets, while Airbus is leading the development of a loyal host remote carrier drone along with new cloud capabilities and stealth technologies. Indra manages the sensor system, while Safran built a new jet engine for the fighter jet. At the industrial level, 16 top companies are participating in the demonstration effort, backed by a broader ecosystem of FCAS vendors. It should be noted that in the United Kingdom there is a separate FCAS, within which the future Tempest fighter is being developed. This, it would seem, is now included in the Global Combat Air Program GCAP, the French German and Spanish FCAS refers to the systems of systems. This will include newly developed technologies, linking them to existing ones. For example, the Typhoon and Raphael fighters, as well as the Airbus A330 MRTT refueling tanker. FCAS needs to keep pace with the US Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD fighter program, the UK, Japan, and others. There is genuine concern about whether European countries can properly fund two competing stealth jet programs. Perhaps with so many shared ambitions and technological crossover, at least some elements of the two programs, like weapons and sensors, could merge eventually. Meanwhile, some Air Force leaders in Europe have called for a merging of the two warring FCAS efforts, led by the UK and Franco-German-Spanish, to secure a better investment of financial resources across the continent. Despite the overall goal of the program, there is still a distinct lack of information on how plans for industrial distribution of jobs will unfold, 
as well as clarification on how many demonstration models will be built, where they will be built, and whether they will be created at the design level. Will they be based solely on Airbus's Eurofighter technology, or perhaps the Salt's Raphael? Future plans for FCAS include demonstrations and experiments for engines, stealth technology, combat clouds, and sensors. In addition to the first flight of the aircraft, flights for FCAS remote carriers and UAVs with a variable payload should take place in 2028. Well, that's all for today. Will the two European projects be merged into one, and what will Japan do then? Will the Europeans be able to compete at the same level as the U.S. aircraft industry, and will this competition surpass the confrontation with China? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.